imagine that this is then one piece of uh, oceanic lithosphere, one piece of ocean, as it were. This is then another piece of oceanic lithosphere. And the subduction zone is where my, my finger is here. The actual movement is a, is a real sheer physical movement at the rate of three, four, five, six centimeters a year down beneath the other piece of oceanic lithosphere. The volcanoes which form the island arc build themselves up on this, um, this side of the plate which is being underridden. And that's quite nicely shown in this diagram here. Here is the descending oceanic plate, such as the Pacific plate, as it goes down beneath Japan. And as the plate descends, in a fashion that we shall discuss when we look at oceans and at volcanoes, melting takes place and volcanic material rises, as you can see in red there, and builds up um, <coughs> a marine volcano, if you like. The volcano rests on the floor of the piece of oceanic lithosphere, which is um, <coughs> riding over the descending uh, lithosphere, which forms the subduction zone. Uh, and there's a whole string of rather nice volcanoes on that, that diagram. Now, at the same time as um, <coughs> lithosphere, oceanic lithosphere is being destroyed by descending down a subduction zone, oceanic lithosphere must also be created. We obviously can't destroy down a subduction zone more than is created because the Earth would have to get smaller. Um, <coughs> so the center of the oceans, where the spreading ridges are, is the, uh, the place where oceanic lithosphere is created. Let's look in detail how that happens. Um, <coughs> this is the simplified as the, the situation. We have splitting in the center of the oceans between the margins of two plates, moving apart like that. This is rather difficult to envisage, but look at this diagram here and see if we can make it a little clearer. Uh, <coughs> this is the splitting point. This piece of oceanic lithospheric plate is going in that direction, and this piece in the opposite direction. And the plates grow to compensate for the destruction down subduction zones by the injection of a dike in the center. You can see the central one is a red line. And each dike, if you simplify it, can be imagined as splitting the previous dike. And so we have matched colors on either side of the, uh, the splitting center here, each representing a dike split in half by a later intrusion. Now, it's obviously a little, little bit more complex than that, um, but that, roughly speaking, is, is what happens. There are lava flows on the surface here, and sediments gradually accumulate as the lithosphere moves uh, to the side from the splitting ridge. Now, let's look at another series of diagrams. This one, you remember, was a Japanese situation. This is another situation in the Japan, Japanese, or the area of Japan. Um, <coughs> there's a subduction zone building up an island arc. And in here, there's a little piece of continent, a little piece of continental lithosphere trapped in the middle of what we would call a small ocean basin, because this is oceanic lithosphere on either side. And here is the Asian mainland. And uh, another present-day situation that's familiar to all of us. This is the Himalayas. This is the continent of India, which rammed against Asia. There is the remnant of the ocean, which once lay between Asia and India, and which gradually disappeared down a subduction zone till the two continents collided. Granite is too light to sink down in a subduction zone because its density is about 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter, a little sugar cube would weigh 2.7 grams, whereas the density of the material in which it would have to descend is about 2.9 or 3 or 3.4 even grams per cubic centimeter. And just like you can't sink a log of wood in water, neither can you sink granite back down a subduction zone. Behind India is the beginning of another subduction zone, because remember, uh, the subduction zone in front of India was destroyed, 
another one is beginning to be created here in order to balance the, um, <clears throat> the, the loss of a point where oceanic um, lithosphere was being destroyed originally in front of India. So this is a, a balance for the Himalayas, if you like. And then finally to Europe, which is quite a complex situation. This is the continent of Africa sitting like a raft in the lithospheric plate of the Mediterranean, which is getting smaller. Africa is approaching the northern shore of the Mediterranean. This is Turkey, which is wedged between the now decreasing uh, ocean of the Mediterranean and the decreasing ocean of the Black Sea which very few people think of as an ocean, but geologically the Black Sea is the remnant of an ocean. And so Africa is approaching Europe. Turkey is wedged between uh, these two major uh, pieces of, of, of lithosphere. And Turkey will eventually be rammed up against Europe and become a wedge between Africa and Europe. Down the center of Turkey is what we call a transform fault, um, some of which you saw in the film. And this is a point where uh, lateral movement, sideways movement, is taking place. Um, <clears throat> and this is the site of very much of the earthquake activity, the disruption in Turkey, along what we call the Anatolian Fault. Now we'll follow up plate tectonics throughout the course, and we'll see many instances where plate tectonics is important. We'll look at it when we discuss ice ages. We'll look at it when we discuss fossils. Plate tectonics is in fact the very bulwark of geology at the present day. There's still time to enroll in TV Ontario's fascinating geology series, Understanding the Earth. For a registration fee of $48, you'll receive a learning package which includes a viewer's guide and an extensive text called Physical Geology. In Toronto, call 967-3891. Outside Toronto, call toll-free 1-800-268-1121. Visa and MasterCard are accepted. This is TV Ontario, Channel 19 in Toronto,